Uh, I like you listening to Six Music with me, Russell Howard. I hope you're very well indeed on this Sunday morning. How are you, John? I'm all right. I'm all right. Sweet. How are you, Russell? Not too bad. Well, I'm a bit, as you know, I'm a bit ill. So it's a bit oh, of a, yeah. A bit of a problem, really. So if I cough and splutter throughout the show, I'm not uh, doing it to annoy you. Pre- probably really, not you, but the people listening at home be horrible. And I'm going to do one now. So, John, fill the air. <laughs> uh, what a hideous start to the show. And I should be the one that's ill, because you're the one that had the horrible journey here. Yeah, damn right. Mega bus, Edinburgh, nine hours. How much? Woo woo. Ten pound fifty. That's not what for Edinburgh. Yeah, free Edinburgh. That's what you have to say. You don't say from Edinburgh. Right, yeah, but you want to get Edinburgh. that right, or you're in real trouble. Why? Well, you get beaten up. If you try and if you try and do a Scottish impression and then fall out of it, never a good thing. Hello there, how are you? And if you know certain words you struggle on, like I can never say Russell in my voice. So you know, try I'm, Russell. You know, it just sounds. That yeah. was Jordy, that. Yeah, well, exactly. That's a snag. You know, I remember I once uh, tried to order a Ribena at a bar, and I thought about doing it in, in uh, a Scottish accent. Why? Um, because I was in Scotland, John, and uh, I thought if I said it, in, I was quite young at the time, and I thought I was, I thought somehow I was going to get to the bar and go, I would like a Ribena, please, and everyone, right, let's get them. But uh, so I toyed with the idea of doing it in, uh, you know, in a Scottish accent. I think in a Scottish accent when I'm in Scotland. Do you? Mm. Oh, it's the same. Wherever I am, I find myself thinking in the accent of that place. Which is awkward, because it nearly gets you beaten up. What's the longest coach journey you've ever done? Good question, John. Thanks, uh, Russell. Uh, uh, I don't know. Probably, I don't really go on coaches. Different lifestyles, you and me. I wouldn't have gone on the coach. <laughs> Yesterday really taught me. There's something so, um, crude about going by coach. <laughs> oh, my God, how snobbish did you say? There's something so vulgar about the people who would propel themselves along in this ragged way. Well, for a start, I never said that. Yeah, that's But, this, you, you know, like, when you fly, you feel like a businessman going off to do business in business town. Well, that's where we differ, because when, whenever I fly, you see me, my temptation is to take off is to go, Ugh. and I don't think many businessmen do that. No, no, that's true. So what's wrong with the bus, it's just, like, there's a romance about the train, and oh, there there's is. something quite independent and free about driving, but the coach is just makes you feel like a battery hen. <laughs> Tough times for the battery hen, I should leave him alone. That's a fair point. Did you meet any friends? Because you were up all night, I was quite excited for you, I thought he was going to meet a like-minded soul here. I met an obese man snoring. Did you get on? You get two seats when you're obese, but not when you're not obese. Okay, good This fact. is the law. So what are you saying there? Fat people are trying to get a bargain. Oh, do you know what I don't like? What with, don't you like, John? This could of... this could be an hour long section. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I don't like? Well, that narrows it down. Everything. Yeah, exactly. If you sit like, like on a bus, right? We're all getting on the bus, all and the driver was very rude. Oh, here we go. Very, it, very. What, what rude. he probably was was a lovely man who said hello to you. He oh, was not to... a lovely man. What happened, John? He what? was loading up everyone's satchels into the boot. Nice. We right? got we got on a school trip. We're going to Dirtle Door. We're gonna have the time of our life. And he never said, "You got to tell me where your bags." gang because I got in your witch bet. He never said that. So people were passing him his bags and he took great delight every time going, well, where are you going then? So they would go Sheffield and he's going, well, right. right. And then this uh, this little uh, girl needed her bag back out because it had a code in it and he refused to get her bag out. And said, had a code in it? A little uh, access code to get on the bus. You know, like a stream of numbers that proves that you've paid for a ticket. Or oh, did you have to do that As if now? if you try and sneak on Here's a nine-hour uncomfortable coach. Now, I think a lot of people have learnt a lot about you over the last couple of weeks, John. Did you memorise that code? No, it's a big, really? long one. Big really? Long. I could have memorised it, because there's actually, like, the code is made up of the constituent parts of the journey time. That would have been terrific, wouldn't it? Just him being all arsy and getting really annoyed. Oh, the eagle will leather back. And you, CM123, <laughs> X42, check in. They wouldn't thank you for it, though. They I, would... I had it written down in my diary. Of course, and he, of course my, he did. He snatched Incredible. my diary off me and held it under the light so he could check it. Oh, my God. But not... I had my credit card details written down there because I'd paid, so he could have been memorising my credit card That's details. not the worst thing. I've had a flick of your diary. I mean, it's awkward. That we sh- you should find out now, but, yeah, <laughs> you've written some incredible stuff in there. Yeah. We're all about the diary. Well, it was after a gig as well, and after a gig I write down what I've done and any ad-libs. So yeah. if I've said, you know, something about someone putting a melon somewhere and it's been funny, I'll write it down. So he could have read my access code and then... I did a joke about sticking a melon up someone's backside.